Hey everyone, it's Scott from CertMedia.com, and in this video I'm going to be covering JCH Optimize. This is a free WordPress optimization plugin found on the WordPress.org repository. There is a pro version, but we're only going to be covering what comes for free. So this plugin is kind of like Auto Optimize in that it's meant to can help you optimize your website's load time by combining assets, lazy loading, and additional optimization features that you kind of expect. The one thing that I can say about this plugin is it's not a very pretty user interface. It kind of needs to be updated, but we are going to discuss its features, its recommended recommended settings, and I'm going to try and make it very easy for you to understand. So the description main item here is basically just support the plugin and links to documentation, but you first get to configure your options by going to the combined CSS and JavaScript. So you get to enable, and then there's automatic settings. You can choose to use minimum, intermediate, average, deluxe, premium, and optimum. And these basically just modify the automatic settings for the website. It can sound a little confusing. If you click optimum, it is the optimum settings, but we're gonna go through and just show you what each of the levels are and what you should look at doing. So the HTML minification level, there's a basic, ultra, and advanced. So the basic, as it mentions, will remove white spaces outside of elements. And then the advanced level will remove HTML comments. And ultra will remove redundant attributes, such as text, JavaScript, and remove quotes around select attributes. So when it comes to JavaScript files, you do not need to declare that it's a text JavaScript because you're already using the script tag to define them. This will remove those tags, and as you can see, it's compressed it down into basically one line. If I can find a JavaScript file on here, I'll show you what it did. In the footer, it just says script, and then the URL, and then async. It merged everything into one file. In fact, it did it so much so that there are no inline scripts at all, except for one that was a comment for IE8 compatibility. This is one of those plugins, very similar to Swift, where because it combines everything, your cache size can get out of control. In fact, it will get out of control. So typically what I recommend doing is you're gonna have to <laughs> be careful when using this plugin. Because it combines everything, it will eventually cause the cache size to get too large. We're gonna go into how to prevent this, but just keep it in mind for later. You can use try catch wrapping, which I don't typically recommend. There is a performance hit for certain browsers when it comes to figuring out the JavaScript. So I don't typically recommend running with this. And then for the combined files delivering, you can choose either to use a static file or to use PHP. In almost every situation, you should use a static file because it can be served from a CDN and it's easier cached. And the only time you would use PHP is if rewrites are not working on your server. You then have the option for miscellaneous settings, which are to optimize the HT access. This just adds gzip and expires headers to the HT access file. I recommend going ahead and clicking this. You can fix file permissions if something has happened, if CSS files are not rendering, among other issues. And you can also choose to clean the cache altogether. As you can see, this cache size seems to be getting exponentially longer every time this page is refreshed. I would not be surprised if this just keeps growing, but we're gonna get to that. Order plugin, what this does is the plugin will automatically set the execution order of plugins to ensure compatibility. Basically, it helps the plugin maintain the order of when things are being executed. It basically just makes itself execute the, the farthest back. That way everything works as expected. And then the only thing you could really do in here is there is the debug plugin, which just helps you with debugging uh, any issues that you're getting with code. But more importantly, you can disable it for logged in users. And oftentimes you would want to do this depending on your website because this plugin is quite aggressive by default. We're gonna to go to the exclude options. Now this allows you to exclude URLs from the plugin that you do not wish to for it to be optimized. You'll include a direct URL for a page. So if I page did the backslash in, this would be for the homepage. 
and it would be excluded. You typically don't need to exclude a page from being optimized. You would rather exclude the assets that should not be optimized. And that's where these options get. Exclude files while preserving the original execution order of the codes on the page. Basically, if you exclude a CSS file, it'll make sure that it goes back to where it was. You could just do exclude a whole file by including some of the options that it provides here. You can exclude CSS files from these plugins by just including whole plugins that you do not need to be optimized. This is useful if you've added, say, a contact form plugin and the contact form no longer works. And then you could just do exclude individual internal style declarations. So these are inline styles. So if you have an inline CSS block, this will go ahead and allow you to exclude it by adding one of the inline CSS rules that were being output on the page. You typically run into less issues with inline CSS as you do with inline JavaScript. So you can just exclude JavaScript altogether. So for this website, because the cache size would get out of control, eventually we would want to exclude jQuery JS. But then we want to exclude inline attributes that are being combined. Pretty much any of these items that are Ajax based or really anything that had C data, you could just exclude it. And then as you can see, exclude all script declarations. This is useful if you're generating an excess amount of cache. What this does is it says, okay, we will not combine any inline scripts. This is useful if you just don't have the time to debug it. And so long as you've excluded jQuery JS up here, it should work without any problem. Because I'm going to enable that option, I'm going to uncheck this code, the option that I left here as an example. And then you can exclude files that you do not want to maintain the original execution order of. You don't typically need to do this. You, you really only need to do this if there are dependencies on other files that were combined. So if you combined an asset that for some reason doesn't like to be combined or it doesn't like to be minified, you could exclude it here and it will move it after the merged JavaScript in the footer. So that way the order is still maintained without causing any issues. You can then choose to not move the file, uh, to not move files to the bottom of the page by excluding them here. We're just going to go ahead and we've excluded jQuery and the inline scripts. So we're going to make sure that everything is loading better. jQuery JS is loading perfectly fine in the header as we expect. And it looks like it's gone ahead and split out a bunch of files all together. So this is acceptable, but I'm, I'm still not really a fan of this plugin. Basic features, this allows you to set a page cache. Page caching is very important. This plugin does an okay job with page caching. And it's because I tend to like page caching plugins to be separate or at least well-maintained. This is kind of an afterthought and it's very rudimentary at best. Cache Enabler is typically my recommended go-to if you just need basic page caching functionality. Just install it, be done with it, it works out of the box. This allows you to set you can enable it. You can say how long a page is to be cached. Typically 12 hours is what you should have it, 12, 12 or 10, depending if you're allowed to set hours on your own. And then you can exclude URLs from the page cache. If you have no page caching enabled, you should enable it in this plugin. That way you're not just hammering your server with a bunch of PHP requests every time a URL is opened. You can then choose to use a sprite generator CSS sprites are very complicated and this plugin tries to help. So we're gonna enable this just to show you what happens. What it will do is if you have a background image in your CSS file, it will try to merge them all together in what's known as a CSS sprite. The advantage to this is it reduces HTTP requests and it can yield better compression ratios. However, the flip side of that is you oftentimes can't do it manually because a lot of times it comes from plugins. A big one that always does this is Soliloquy. It's a slider plugin and it does get flagged a lot for this error in GT Matrix test. I'm not a big fan of recommending this because oftentimes you save so little bytes that it's not worth it. And if you're serving your images as WebP or SVG, then you're typically just fine but you could do the sprite build direction to be vertical or horizontal. Vertical is typically what's what I do. For wrap images, this 
It basically says the setting will wrap images into a sprite into another row or column if the sprite becomes longer than 2000 pixels. Basically, if you're using the horizontal option, this would split columns off every 2000 pixels. And then you could just add image attributes. So if a plugin is declared as an image size, but it's missing the width and height attributes, this will add it. This is actually a real issue, and this is a good thing that it tries to solve. Every image source should declare its image width and its image height. I'm gonna see if I can find one right, right now if it doesn't do that. There's probably a logo. Oh, this has it declared. Oftentimes though you see this in themes where logos do not have their height and width attributes declared. This tries to remedy that. But again, it's something that shouldn't need to be fixed by a plugin, but it is. And this is a really good option. I wish more caching plugins offered this sort of functionality. The reason most of them don't is because the plugin oftentimes just gets it wrong because it tries to guess or it just tries to add the attributes that the image size came. So if the image that you're uploading is 1920 by 1080, but you're downscaling up to half of that resolution, it will add the height and width attributes to be 1920 by 1080. And depending on your CSS, it will not downscale properly and it can cause breakage. I believe at a time WordPress Rocket added these attributes, maybe at some point in its past, an early launch, um, but I believe they removed it down the line for various issues that were happening. Maybe one of you can tell me in the comments below if that's true or not. Under the advanced features, again, these are all gonna be in pro. It has HTTP2 server push. You do get the optimized CSS delivery, which will go ahead and it will attempt to extract critical CSS for the above the fold. And you can choose the number of elements you want to be included up to 800. You can then also choose to remove unused CSS. This causes breakage quite often but this is not in the free version, so we're not gonna talk about it. You can enable lazy loading for images. You cannot enable it for iframes, but then you can choose to auto size images. I recommend enabling this. If you have a CDN, you can include the settings here. And then finally, you get the optimize images option, which this will try to do anyway. It will ignore opt optimized images because we're not in the pro version. But this is effectively everything in the plugin. As you can see, it went ahead and it created the inline CSS, and then the CSS file was loaded here with an asynchronous loading tag. So all in all, here, here's the good and the bad when it comes to this plugin. It is not easy to use. There are advanced options in here. Many times they just don't quite work all that well. Um, increasing the number of I will note that increasing the number of elements can resolve issues with the loading of the front page, but it also makes the inline CSS much larger. Um, all in all, it's a great plugin for what it is, but oftentimes it will cause you to rip your hair out, out of frustration with how difficult it is to use. And the one thing you got to keep an eye out for is the cache size getting too large. There are some features in the pro version you don't find anywhere else. I don't see any other plugin right now offering remove unused CSS, mostly because it's very unreliable. But as it stands, it's, it's a great free plugin that you can try to use for your website. I mean, I gave you some general pointers and recommendations for exclusions. Make sure you're excluding your files here, mostly jQuery and excluding the inline JavaScript assets here as you can. But again, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask below. I will try to help you out. Otherwise, thank you all so much for watching and goodbye.